so our project is Chain Chat. I'm Arav. Uh, I'm a freshman studying CS at Cornell. Hi, I'm Rodrigo, studying CS and math at Cornell, head of research at Cornell Blockchain. Hey, I'm Kiernan. I'm a CS student at Rutgers University, uh, president of Rutgers Blockchain and a Solana University ambassador. Yeah, so basically we developed this kind of chat GPT inspired tool called Chain Chat. And essentially the way it works is um, kind of, it sort of works like you talk to the chatbot and the goal is sort of to be able to make on-chain transactions, do a couple different things like directly on the blockchain, all in Chain Chat itself, and you never have to actually leave the application that we made. It kind of differs from what you normally think of like a chat GPT tool where you're kind of just sending requests for info, you get kind of like some output, it kind of helps you explain concepts or other things. In this case, you're actually directly interacting with this chatbot, it's actually gonna perform uh, like actual transactions for you. So we can kind of, to explain a little bit better, sort of like demo a little bit, demo it a little bit. So it says like what network would you like to use today? We could put in like Ethereum. So then like I go to MetaMask, ask me to connect to my wallet. We're just working on a test net right now. There you go, it tells you exactly your wallet is connected, here's your address, and then you can like type in a command like I want to send my friend like 0 0.000001 ETH because we're pretty poor these days. ETH is hard to get at, especially girly ETH. Uh, and also, I will send this, I'm also going to send this to myself just on a different account. I can't like I can't like lose all that. Uh, so yeah, now that we sent the transaction, uh, MetaMask is going to ask if we actually want to verify it. We say confirm because we actually want to make sure that um, we're not like actually taking any private keys or anything. We're going straight through MetaMask so all the transactions happen right there where the user can actually decide whether or not they want to continue with. We have the transaction hash. We can go check it out on like the test net. And let's see that. And it says that it's a short while. It'll almost uh, be confirmed. But essentially like the way it works is like we have like kind of the NLP is able to extract kind of all these, these key terms we type in. There's a bunch of different ways you could ask it to send you money. You could say, there's a bunch of different keywords you could use. It kind of like uses the NLP, kind of the ChatGPT API to extract the key information from that text and put in that appropriate request. It also works with um, other like nets, like we could try it with Solana as well. It'll link to your Phantom account, do a similar transaction, you could show that as well. So uh, obviously, as you guys know, it's hard to implement a lot of features in you know, the 48 hours that we had, but we began to implement a lot more things for this. What we kind of aimed for was to be able to carry out any transaction on chain. So you, you know, it kind of goes in a progressive nature where you first implement DEXs and then you add more and more complexity until you eventually get to the point where you can say something like, uh, would you mind taking 0.5 ETH out of my Uniswap V3 LP position and move it to an Aave loan? So we can keep adding and adding complexity on top. And also, like you mentioned before, the NLP algorithm is pretty, pretty complex. So you don't have to say, like, can you send it to my friend? You can say, can you transfer, uh, can you deliver, like, a lot of different synonyms and we'll be able to pick it up. So one of the main inspirations for this project was kind of a commitment to improving decentralization in any way that we can. In the past year, there's been a lot of notable attacks on uh, people getting fished by malicious front ends. You know, sometimes you'll go to the front page of Google and there'll be an ad at the top for a fake site of the protocol that you're trying to interact with. This would basically remove the need for you to interact with any protocol's front end whatsoever. You could self-host all of this. Uh, eventually, we would want to add a contact feature so that you could whitelist your friends under their names along with their wallet addresses and also whitelist uh, protocols that you use often in addition to a uh, kind of hash map that we would have in the back end of say the top 1,000 protocol addresses and things like that. So uh, this also contributes to decentralization in the way that you can kind of work around any uh, geolocation blocking or any KYC implementations that might be limited to just the front end, as here you can interact with solely the smart contract. So ideally in the future, we want to implement more features like API requests and some of those information gets, like we were talking about with uh, kind of what normal GT GPT implementations are currently known for. And uh, we think this, if continued to be developed, could be a very good open source project for the community and a really good project that someone could run on their own client 
and be able to bypass a lot of the current infrastructure that's currently set up. Yeah, and like I think we talked about, I guess I said it worked on Ethereum, we tried on Solana, we've also worked on other EVM compatible stuff, we've worked on uh, Arbitrum, uh, that I worked on Avalanche as well. We're hoping to make that kind of just overall EVM compatible. And another thing we're also looking into is like kind of just making it more user friendly, like instead of actually having the hashes, maybe use the ENS uh, addresses or something like that instead. Or we can, we're trying thinking of also implementing like kind of like a contact mapping type of thing where you have like a friend, I want to uh, send ETH to Bob, Bob will get mapped to their like corresponding hash key. And that way it kind of just like creates this overall system that just makes it really user friendly for anyone. Because I know personally like me like two years ago, I didn't really know anything about blockchain and doing just like stuff like these types of transactions seem kind of foreign to me. And I was kind of always like wondering what is that like Venmo or very like simple equivalent to doing transactions in the blockchain. And like if you have something very simple like this, it could also help get all kind of like newer people like introduced and taking them through the process of just making like very simple transactions and stuff like that. So yeah, we hope if this is continued to be developed, it could be a real boon to UX design across the entire space. And we hope that it can uh, kind of verticalize some of the front verticalize some of the front-end stack and remove the need for things like centrally centralized hosting of front-ends and things like that for protocols, because when you can interact directly with the contract, you really don't need that. Yeah, I guess sort of like to add one more note to that, what's really awesome about this is that, you know, in this demo we showed off that, you know, whether it be on the Gorley test net or like, you know, Solana or whatever, um, you can make really simple transfers of the native token from one person to another. However, what's really awesome about um, ChainChat as well is that it's modular in the sense that, you know, if, you know, whether I or like someone halfway like across the world wants to implement some new feature, whether it be, you know, um, swap my Shiba Inu for like X tokens using Uniswap V3, or hey, I have this Aave position, please modify it to do this and that, right? What's really awesome is that even though like, you know, this seems like it's a lot, right? The actual logic and modularity behind it allows it for anyone to sort of implement their own logic and sort of going back to what you were saying about decentralization, right? What's really awesome is that, you know, we in the future could put out just, you know, a general version of chain chat, which, you know, does the basics, right? You know, we can send people the native token or the native coin, we can send people, um, or we can call like um, smart contract to do really simple things. But in the future, you know, this whole idea of it being decentralized as well, we can sort of allow people to add on their own features to sort of fork chain chat to make, I don't know, like, Buddy, buddy, friend, or whatever, whatever name we have for this in the past, um, they can you know fork this, make their own features, and sort of like you know build upon this idea. But overall, in total, um, change is really awesome because you know this is really simple, but this is sort of a gateway for a lot of people to sort of enter crypto. Like for example, I know if I show my mom like app.uniswap.org, right, she'd be freaked out because she'd be like, "What are all these things?" But if I told her like, "Hey, you know." Here's your like local like AI for crypto. Let's do whatever you want with this. You'd be like, okay, I. It'll still be a little bit of a learning curve, but you know, it'll still be you know much more feasible for her to learn this kind of stuff rather than like you know using Uniswap as a whole. Yeah, and we're hoping also like if we implement a lot of like uh, kind of basic like what you think of ChatGPT, like the question answering and stuff like that for certain block hashes or just like general kind of questions on a specific net that also might help if kind of some beginners are getting introduced they have general questions so I could serve more as like a multi-purpose thing kind of just to get people introduced thank you any questions So that was actually our original implementation. We had it entirely carried out in the Python backend. Uh, it would sign the transaction with your private key, but we figured there's probably a slight dissonance with how people think about interacting with the blockchain. Uh, so I think having that MetaMask there and having people actually physically confirm the transaction is probably a positive, but it's pretty simple. We could just revert some of the changes we made and it could go back to automatic signing. I think for now, what we have is the information of the general like format. I think is being sent straight to ChatGPT. 
I think we probably in the future will implement something more where like we're trying to hide private certain like private details. But I think it's being used directly by the API and then with the NLP kind of in combination it tries to extract like just whatever the very key features are, not like for example specific names, but just like the amount value, the from address to address, and stuff like that. Yeah, just to add on that, that could definitely be a possible option going forward. Just, you know, being a hackathon, it's a bit hard to accumulate an NLP data set and things like that related to such a, kind of a specific use case. But in an ideal world where everything is self-hosted, you wouldn't want to rely on exterior APIs like that. Sorry, can you speak up, please? When you were building, did your natural language processor select for like very well audited contracts, or how did you get it worked that out? So with the current implementation that we have it, the natural language processing is just processing the input. The contracts are uh, manually supported in the back end with a hash map. So it's like Uniswap is mapped to the Uniswap V3 router contract. And uh, if we deployed it uh, as like an open source project, it would probably have a big mapping of those with say the top 1,000 contracts or something like that. And then people would be able to manually map more if they wanted to. Are you giving this uh, chat GPT your private key? No. Okay. Like they can't just like pull money out of that account? No, uh, kind of what I mentioned to him before, it was originally done with the Python backend, uh, also still not giving it the private key, it was an exterior function. But with this, the uh, signing of the transactions is done on the front end with uh, either MetaMask or Phantom Wallet. So no private key being given. What happens if you try to perform a thing that's not possible through Wallet? Say like insufficient funds or like some unallowed transaction? Uh, I don't believe we have error handling for that right now, which is yeah. kind of funny because we probably should have thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll definitely look into implementing it right now, but obviously if you have insufficient funds, I think I've tried that before, obviously, when I've accidentally typed in like 100 ETH instead of like 0 0.01, and then it just, it takes you to the MetaMask, obviously, and says you don't have insufficient funds, and you click reject the request. But um, we'll definitely make a more formal thing for that. That'll definitely be something that we need to add. Yeah, that's something we're looking into as well, like seeing if they can like also like almost like give you some sort of like feedback or advice on like current positions that you're looking at based on previous data. The only issue with that is we don't want to keep storing user data and put that into some sort of model to like have your own personal model. So that might have to be more like a privacy thing. Like we ask the user when they make their chat chain, chain chat account, like do you consent to being like your data being used for that? If so, then yeah, we can kind of help uh, tailor some of the responses accordingly. Sounds like you could use phones. <laughs> Probably. Sure. <laughs> so it seems like a lot of like the contract interactions like operations are like hard coded right now. But have you thought about like something like more generic, where like you know like the chat GPT would like crawl block it for like all the possible like operations you, you can do, and then kind of like generate cool new like use cases automatically. Yeah, so that kind of goes into the idea of a more traditional like crypto chat GPT where you're asking questions about protocols or things like that. Uh, we could probably implement that where you feed in the contract data so it automatically has the functions and then it's then able to map that on some kind of generic semi-similar transaction type request. Where here we just have it based on uh, kind of like the bigger protocols and kind of like model things. So we have like a swap function and a transfer function. So, uh, but yeah, as we expand into kind of more of a what you would normally think of chat GPT is doing, that is probably uh, along the roadmap. Um, would it be possible for the NLP to do super fast transactions like flash like flash loans, like create a flash loans contract or even um, MEV contracts, or is that hard to do because of the routing that needs to be done before it addresses the contract? Uh, I guess that would depend on the chain. On a chain like Ethereum with 12 second block confirmation, it would likely be possible as it takes under 12 seconds, but uh, that would be something that would have to be tested. I can't answer that with full confidence off the top of my head. I think that's it for questions. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. So we have two more talks left.